All right, look, I know Tony's going to have a lot more to say about all of this next week when he returns to host. But yesterday we all saw, uh, much with disbelief, as Senate Democrat leader Chuck Schumer championed himself as a guardian of the people of Israel and then proceeded to go after the Israeli government as it is in a battle of its life against terrorists who literally want to slaughter the people of Israel. And all of this follows, of course, the Biden administration is also turning away from their support uh, for Israel and uh, tossing them to the wind in order to just uh, secure the base on the left during this election year. And we need to recognize that the church and Christians worldwide now need to stand as one and to stand with praying for uh, Israel. So joining me now to discuss this and much more uh, for our weekly worldview segment is David Clawson. He's the director of the Center for Biblical Worldview here at FRC. David, welcome back to Washington Watch. Always great to have you. Great to be with you again, Jody. Well, listen, I was uh, just personally reading this past week and uh, Proverbs 12, 28 came up that says anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression but a good word makes it glad. And I was just so reminded of the reality that it's all the horrible news that we just keep hearing builds anxiety in the inside uh, if we're not careful. And uh, from there comes depression. But there is something that can help turn all that around, and that's a good word. It's the word of the Lord. So let's start by discussing what Scripture says, our first topic at hand is Israel. What does the scripture have to say about nations blessing Israel? Yeah, Jody, I think a lot of people will actually be surprised at how much the Bible actually talks uh, about the people of Israel, about the nation of Israel. Um, you know, and, and there's debates about uh, many passages, uh, but you can't read your Bible uh, without walking away with an understanding that God loves uh, the people of Israel. Uh, he loves the nation of Israel. Uh, these are his original covenant partners. Uh, you know, a, a key text actually, Jody, is um, Genesis chapter 12, uh, the first couple of verses. Uh, specifically, this actually helps us understand uh, the perspective of those who are supposed to be friends with Israel. Uh, this is the covenant that God actually makes with Abraham. And in verse 3, he says, I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, referring to Abraham, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And what's interesting, Judy, that's not just a one-off comment that, that, that God, the creator of the universe, makes. He actually reaffirms this covenant in Genesis chapter 15, as well as in Genesis chapter 17, when he makes this everlasting covenant. And if I could just quote one verse in verse 8, again, reaffirming this covenant, he says, I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And so for centuries, Christians have looked at uh, these verses and others. We could look at Jeremiah 31, Ezekiel 36, other places in Scripture uh, that just show uh, the, God's love for the people of Israel. They're the apple of his eye. And I think there's a biblical basis, even in Paul's letter to the Romans, Romans 11. Uh, even theologians, Jody, who will say, well, you know, the church maybe has superseded Israel as kind of the covenant partners of God. Even those theologians will look at Romans 11 and say, God's not done with the people of Israel. He loves the people of Israel. And I think as Christians, we should take our cues from all of these passages. You know, and I, I totally agree with what you're saying, but even in light of the fact that as we are watching really a partisan divide in our country where we have been unified over our uh, support of Israel from, from since 1948, really. Yeah. Uh, but now that there is this partisan divide, how much more important is it for Christians to step up, to pray for, and to help in any way they can to support Israel? Well, absolutely. And actually, King David's helpful here, Jody. Um, in Psalm 126, verse 6, uh, he says to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, may, those who, uh, th may those be secure who love you. Uh, may there be security within your walls, within your towers. Uh, but again, Psalm 126 says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So what can Christians do right now, uh, Jody? Uh, we need to be praying. 
Uh, we need to be praying uh, for the people of Israel. We need to be praying for the government of Israel. Uh, and we need to be praying for the leaders of the world uh, to have wisdom and discernment, not to cave in to political pressure. You know, one of the, my favorite verses when I'm thinking about political issues, Jody, is Ephesians 4, chapter 15, uh, where Paul says the church ch says to the church in Ephesus to speak the truth in love. And so one very practical thing all of us can do is to speak the truth. Uh, we speak it in love, but to speak the truth. And I think part of that speaking in truth is pointing to the fact that uh, tragically, uh, we now have a movement in this country, and this didn't come out of nowhere, Jody. Uh, the BDS movement and you know the boycott, divest, and sanction movement. This has been growing on college campuses for years. Uh, the, an the latent anti-Semitism has exploded, uh, and on campuses like Harvard, we saw that earlier uh, this year and into last year. Uh, but we need to be speaking the truth in love, Jody, and helping people realize uh, that the, the Christian worldview gives no sanction no safe harbor uh, for anti-Semitism, for any sort of hatred for the Jewish people. Great word. Well, look, it's been a, a busy, busy week. So much is in the news. So let's uh, try to uh, move on to another topic here that I think a lot of people were shocked over, and that is yesterday, Vice President uh, Harris went to an abortion facility. Uh, this is the first time that a sitting vice president went to a facility that's killing babies. I mean, what in the world does this say about uh, this administration? What does it say about the Democrats' extreme position on abortion? And how do we need to look at this in light of Scripture? Well, in light of Scripture, uh, Jody, we need to understand the worldview dynamics here. And, uh, you know, in one sense, I'm not surprised at all uh, that Kamala Harris uh, actually went to this Minnesota abortion clinic. Uh, first time, a, like you said, a president or a vice president has ever gone to an abortion clinic. But again, in one sense, I'm not at all surprised. This has been the most pro-abortion uh, administration that we have ever seen. And that, that's not an exaggeration. Uh, just a couple things the Biden administration has done. Uh, within a couple of weeks of taking office, they repealed the Mexico City policy uh, that made sure uh, that American taxpayer funds uh, didn't support uh, groups overseas uh, that promote or perform abortion. Uh, within a couple of weeks, again, of taking office, they removed, uh, President Biden removed the United States from the Geneva Consensus Declaration, uh, which had been a declaration spearheaded by the Trump administration of 34 nations that declared abortion, uh, that there's no international right to abortion. Uh, within the first year of being president, Biden made sure that HHS uh, rewrote Title 10 guidelines to allow abortion facilities to receive funding. Uh, under the Biden administration, the FDA uh, has gone all in on making sure uh, that there are no uh, guardrails in place for chemical abortion pills, even now allowing uh, pharmacies uh, to take prescriptions uh, on abortion pills. Um, another thing, you know, right after the Roe v. Wade decision was overturned by the Supreme Court, uh, President Biden put out an executive order uh, ordering uh, the Attorney General and White House counsel uh, to find lawyers uh, that would sue pro-life states pro bono. And, and so all that to say, and I could give a million, you know, even appointing someone like Julie Reichelman to the federal bench. This is the attorney who actually represented the Mississippi Abortion Clinic in the Dobbs decision. And now, thanks to President Biden, she has a lifelong appointment to the federal bench. All that to say, Jody, I'm not at all surprised that Kamala Harris, uh, who's on a nationwide tour promoting abortion, uh, would show up to an abortion clinic. And yet, as a Christian, knowing what abortion is, it's the taking of innocent life, knowing what God's position on the life issue is, that all people are made in His image and have inherent value and dignity, it is a dark chapter in our history, Jody, uh, to see the sitting vice president uh, walk those dark hallways uh, and say that this is something that's good, this is something that's morally praiseworthy, when we know it's anything but that. Yeah, and I, I think back, even the Clintons uh, would not have done this. They knew that just the optics uh, were wrong and they would have never done this. But one of the things that this administration does uh, and the Democratic Party, I think, as a whole, as it relates, they, they push abortion, but they are very careful not to use that word. Uh, they often couch it in, in phrases like women's health, like uh, just like Vice President did yesterday. Uh, women's health 
is vastly different from abortion, but that's they have used that word as a substitute for abortion. In fact, uh, you know, that's why with them, if there are fewer abortions, it is a health crisis, as the vice president mentioned yesterday. Uh, if we can, let's play clip six. I'd like to get your response to this. Many of you have asked, why am I here at this, at this facility in particular? And I will tell you, it is because right now in our country, we are facing a very serious health crisis. And the crisis is affecting many, many people in our country, most of whom are, frankly, silently suffering. All right, your reaction. Uh, Jody, you need to be living in a morally inverted universe uh, to make that statement that the vice president did with a straight face. Uh, abortion is the killing of innocent children. And to use the euphemism, a health care crisis, well, in one sense, I'll agree with the vice president. It is a health care crisis when you have a nation that allows abortion in many places up until the moment of birth. Sure, that's a health care crisis. But to say the lack of the ability to kill your child is a health care crisis a healthcare crisis uh, uh, that is making a mockery of the, even the English language, and it is coming from a place of deep moral darkness. Uh, Jody, you know, what's interesting is really it is the activist community uh, that's pushing the Biden-Harris administration on this. Even, uh, you know, President Biden himself, I think, sometimes feels uncomfortable talking about abortion. Uh, at the State of the Union, uh, you know, in his prepared remarks, the word abortion was there. And when it came time to that, when he got to that part of the speech, he used a uh, euphemism. Uh, he used, I think, reproductive health care or something that way. But the activist community, which is actually encouraging you know, women to so-called shout their abortion, uh, the activist community that's going to the Supreme Court and popping abortion pills uh, in front of news cameras, you know, this, the, the Planned Parenthood, the NARAL, these groups are pushing the Biden-Harris uh, administration to really, again, uh, make the Obama and Clinton White Houses almost look tame in comparison. Absolutely. I want to play one more clip for you and get a quick reply. Then I want to go to one more issue. Play clip seven, please. There's a fundamental point on this issue that I think most people agree with, which is that one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government should not be telling women what to do with their body. Unbelievable. All right, here's the vice president say, you don't have to abandon your faith to support abortion. She says it in a, a different way. Your response to that real quickly. Yeah, real quick, Jody, I would just say the Bible from cover to cover is pro-life. Psalm 139, Luke 1, uh, the idea that a Christian worldview, Christian faith is compatible with abortion, uh, it, there, it's nowhere in the Bible. That argument needs to be rejected as completely ridiculous. Absolutely. All right. One other quick topic, and we've only got a couple of minutes here, but uh, this week in Michigan, a jury found that a father of a school shooter is now partially responsible for the actions of his son. Last month, I should say the mother was convicted of similar charges. Uh, I, there are many directions we can go in this, but give me your overall view. What does the scripture talk about uh, some uh, the, the accountability individuals have for their own behavior and others being held accountable for it. Yeah, a, a principle of scripture is that you are not accountable for anybody else's actions. Uh, you'll see this even in the Old Testament, Jody, where children uh, are not punished for the sins of the fathers. Uh, that, that's really important. When it comes to kind of a biblical worldview and parenting and discipleship, parents are the chief disciple makers in their home. Uh, this comes from Deuteronomy 6. And so this case, there are complexities to it. Uh, the fact that this, this uh, student uh, committed a horrific crime and now both parents are being found uh, at some level responsible. Uh, I think we could debate the specifics of this, but it does make me a, a little wary uh, that we could get to a place where the government uh, is telling parents what they can and cannot do uh, when it comes to directing um, the lives of their children. So again, uh, just broadly speaking, Jody, um, I think that the, the biblical principle here is that all of us are morally accountable uh, before God for the decisions that we make uh, and that parents have the chief uh, responsibility to disciple their children. Yeah, absolutely. And if we're going to go down this path of accusing and holding others accountable, I mean, the government takes a lot of responsibility, too, with all the violence that's on television and the music industry, on video games and on and on and on. 
uh, just indoctrinating children into all this stuff. There's a lot of responsibility to go around. Uh, David Clawson, always great to have you as part of Washington Watch. I know I've got uh, more things I'd love to uh, talk to you about, but we'll have to get to some of those, I guess, next Friday or whenever uh, next opportunity we have to discuss these things. But I want to thank you for the incredible job you do at the Center for Biblical Worldview at FRC, and thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you so much, Jody.